Here, I have a model of a railroad bridge consisting of a two-span tapered beam. In this lecture, we're going to use the slope deflection method to analyze the beam. As you can see, the beam is shallower at the right end and at the left end, but deeper at the center. This change in geometry results in a varying moment of inertia across the length of the beam, which affects the analysis. The standard slope deflection formulation is not applicable here, since it is based on a constant moment of inertia. So we need to use a revised set of slope deflection equations for analyzing the beam. The derivation of the slope deflection equations based on a varying moment of inertia is presented in an accompanying video lecture. Please review lecture SA58A before proceeding with this one. In this lecture, I'm going to show how the revised equations can be used to analyze the bridge. Our tapered beam rests on a roller support at each end and is pin connected to the foundation in the middle of the bridge. We wish to analyze the structure and calculate its support reactions when the left span is under a uniformly distributed load of 20 kN per meter. We are told that the ratio of the deeper to the shallower height of the beam is 4. The height of the beam's cross section at each end is denoted by H0. So the height at the middle support would be 4H0. The continuous beam consists of two segments. AB is 10 meters long and BC has a length of 8 meters. For a typical beam segment subjected to a uniformly distributed load of W, assuming a constant moment of inertia, the slope deflection equations can be written as... If you're not familiar with the slope deflection formulation, please see our previous lectures on this topic. However, here our beam segments are tapered, so the standard equations do not apply. If we assume a rectangular cross-section for the beam, then at the shallower end, where the height is denoted by H0, the moment of inertia about the axis of bending can be written as... For this particular beam segment, the revised slope deflection equations are... The derivation for these equations is given in Lecture Essay 58A. Please review it to familiarize yourself with the process of generating the slope deflection equations for tapered beams. These equations are valid for the case in which H0 is located at the left end and 4H0 is at the right end of the beam. But what if the beam segment has been flipped, like this? Now, 4H0 represents the beam's height at the left end of the segment, and H0 is the height at the right end. Then what would the slope deflection equations look like for this configuration? To arrive at the correct equations for this beam configuration, we can either go through the derivation process explained in video SA58A, or we can take a shortcut. What is the shortcut? Just swap the coefficients of the end rotations and the fixed end moment terms between the two equations, like this. These coefficients are related to the stiffness of the element against rotation. And since we have flipped the beam about the vertical axis, that is, we have swapped the beam's ends, the swapping of the stiffness coefficients would give us the correct slope deflection equations. If you can't wrap your mind around this shortcut, Please go through the derivation, as it was done in Lecture SA 58A, to arrive at the correct slope deflection equations. Having obtained the revised slope deflection equations, we are now ready to analyze the beam. For segment AB, where the length is 10 meters and the intensity of the distributed load is 20 kN per meter, we can write the slope deflection equations like this. For segment BC, where the beam is deeper at the left end than at the right end, and there is no load present, we get these equations. According to the slope deflection method, bending moment equilibrium at the joints of the structure must be maintained. Therefore, three equilibrium equations are needed for calculating the three unknown joint rotations. In the expanded form, the joint equilibrium equations are... Solving them for the unknowns we get...
Knowing the end rotations, we now know the general deformed shape of the beam. It looks like this. If we substitute the calculated end rotations in the slope deflection equations, we get the member end moments. Knowing the end moments, we can now determine the member end shear forces using the static equilibrium equations. For segment AB, we can write, and for BC, the equations and the shear forces are, Placing the computed shear forces at joints A, B, and C, we get. Therefore, the support reactions for the beam are. Please keep in mind that this analysis was done for a two span tapered beam with a rectangular cross section and a deep to shallow height ratio of 4. Different slope deflection equations result if we change these assumptions. The interactive web page referenced here shows how to derive the slope deflection equations for a tapered beam with a different deep to shallow height ratio.